Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 19th of October, and it's Evaluate Your Life Day. Oh, no. And a big happy birthday to Michael Gambon, Caroline Katz, Floyd Mayweather, and Rebecca Ferguson. The country is still reeling from Monday's U-turn madness and the ongoing circus that is British politics. Liz Truss has vowed to stay on despite dwindling support from across the board and said she would try to put the economy on a stronger footing, warning that tough times lie ahead. The Prime Minister also apologised for her disastrous mini-budget that wreaked havoc on the UK economy before the new Chancellor Jeremy Hunt effectively reversed every measure she had put in place, calling her authority into question. But despite Jeremy Hunt's intervention, Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves doesn't think any U-turn will be enough to reverse the damage that's been done. The truth is, an arsonist is still an arsonist, even when they return to the burning building with a bucket of water. The Tories set our economy ablaze, and they're not the people to put the fire out. Meanwhile, the Armed Forces Minister James Heapy was asked how many more mistakes Liz Truss can make, and his response was pretty interesting. Well, I suspect, given how... Uh, skittish our politics are at the moment. Not very many, but she wouldn't have wanted to have made the mistake that she's made. But SNP's Westminster leader Ian Blackford had had enough of all of it and called for Liz Truss to resign. And the Prime Minister just simply thinks it's good enough to say sorry. No, it's not, because at the end of the day, this has been a financial experiment by a government that's caused chaos in the financial markets. And quite simply, the Prime Minister has to accept the responsibility for what she has done and that she needs to go. There have been mixed reactions to the new Chancellor's emergency economic statement. Markets have remained relatively stable following Jeremy Hunt's overhaul of the mini-budget, but the CEO of Kane International and co-owner of Chelsea FC, Jonathan Goldstein, gave a grim outlook on how investors are viewing the country right now. We've had three sovereign wealth funds that we are in business with say to us at the moment, the United Kingdom's on hold. We're actually, uninvestable. We are uninvestable at this point in time. We'd rather watch and watch and wait. Meanwhile, the National Energy Action Director of Policy, Peter Smith, says that the government's U-turn on the energy guarantee, with an April deadline for support, has brought back uncertainty for millions. Even households on median incomes are going to be struggling, and if they're faced with energy bills of over £4,500 from from day one of this support being reduced, it's going to create huge, huge problems for those households financially, but it's also going to have a massive knock-on impact in terms of the, the wider economy. Tuesday in Ukraine saw another prisoner swap successfully completed as 108 Ukrainian women were released in exchange for 110 Russians. Meanwhile, the country faces darkness as Russian strikes have left more than a 1,000 villages and towns without power and water after targeting energy facilities across Ukraine, according to Kyiv. After suffering a series of painful defeats on the battlefield, Russia stepped up aerial attacks in recent weeks on electricity infrastructure in cities away from the front lines. Nigel Gould Davies from the Institute for Strategic Studies thinks it could be a sign of desperation from Russia. Uh, in a sense, they're a sign of desperation. Russia is now uh, reaching for every uh, tool available uh, to it. Uh, and the fact that it has to Uh, make use of Iranian weapons is very significant. Even as attacks continue, the EU delivered €2 billion worth of economic support for Ukraine on Tuesday and they continue to gather evidence and investigate where Russia got the kamikaze drones from and whether Iran is involved. We are following very closely this use of drones. We are gathering evidence, evidence and we will be ready to react with the tools at our disposal. Donald Trump's in hot water yet again over the handling of top-secret information. The former US president's been caught on tape sharing the fawning letters that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un had written to him with journalist Bob Woodward. It's part of the new audio book, The Trump Tapes, with eight hours of recorded interviews, which is set to be released by the Washington Post journalist. In the 2019 recording, the US leader seems to acknowledge he shouldn't be showing the letters around. Nobody else has them, but I want you to treat them with respect. I, I understand, I understand. And don't say I gave them to you, okay? Okay. I've... But I think it's okay. Normally, I wouldn't have given... I wasn't going to give them to Bob, you know. Would you make a photostat of them or something? No, I dictated them into a tape recorder. <laughs> really? <laughs> Still to come on the Smart 7, a united message for the Qatar World Cup, and the Mercury Prize goes to... Right after this. Welcome back. Three. 
Tuesday night saw two games in the Premier League. Brighton drew 0-0 with bottom side Nottingham Forest and a 70-minute goal from Zahar saw Crystal Palace beat a managerless Wolves 2-1 at Selhurst Park. And with just over a month until the start of the Qatar World Cup, ticket sales are now approaching the 3 million mark ahead of the tournament, which kicks off on the 20th of November. Ahead of the unusually wintry tournament in the Middle East, FIFA President Gianni Infantino reiterated that the World Cup in Qatar will be for everyone, as some of the tournament's top officials gathered in Doha. Everyone will be welcomed to the tournament, regardless of their origin, background, religion, gender, sexual orientation or nationality. Tuesday night saw the rescheduled Mercury Prize winner announced at the London Apollo with rapper Little Sims taking the coveted music award. The original event was cancelled at the last minute. It was due to happen the same day that Queen Elizabeth II died. Hosted by Laurel Laverne, the show saw performances from all the nominees, including Self Esteem, Koji Radical and Sam Fender, Joy Crooks, Jesse Buckley and Bernard Butler at the packed event. Winning for her album Sometimes I Might Be Introvert, a delighted Little Sims was thankful for the honour. And last but never ever least, I want to also big up all the other nominees tonight, all the other albums from Joy to Koji, Self Esteem, Wet Leg. All of you guys are incredible. We all made incredible albums. We all changed people's lives with our music, and that's the most important thing. So this is for us, really, you know what I'm saying? Thank you guys so much. Can you guess Chloe Grace Moretz's favourite thing about the UK? The actress has been out and about in London promoting a brilliant new series, The Peripheral, which drops this Friday on Prime Video. Our sister podcast, The Heat 7, caught up with her and she was happy to make a list. My favourite thing? Um, wow. Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> and sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. And gin. <laughs> This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Doris.